if we look at modern yoga the postural kind there have been many many pioneering women who have contributed a lot to this endeavor example if you look at any modern postural yoga class across any western country you will see 80 to 90 percent of them are women students in the class if you look at the most popular magazine in the world on yoga called yoga journal if you look at the past 20 years 98 percent of the time women were on the cover of that magazine so it's very clear that women are at the forefront of yoga today if we examine the yoga scene today for example in the us 85 percent of the yoga practitioners are white 72 percent are women and a large proportion of them are college educated and in australia it runs a parallel gamut now if we examine that globally there are some surveys that suggests that there are a lot more women practicing than men across the globe and this is one example of such survey this is kind of hard to believe in because these this one represents an online survey nevertheless the contrast between men and women in this survey is quite stark one pioneering yoga practitioner of the 20th, 20th century has been Tao Porchon Lynch. She has been a dancer, model, actress, activist, and a yoga teacher. And she wrote a book in 2015 called Dancing Light. And the picture that you see on the left, that's her at the age of 95. She went on to teach yoga until the ripe old age of 100. She passed away at the age of 101. Documented evidence of pioneering yoga women must begin with Kajuran Ali. She was not born with that name. She, that was her assumed name. She was an American called Genevieve Stebbins. And by her own account, she was wheelchair bound and yoga got her out of that. In the experience, she wrote a book called The Divine Posture Influence Upon Endocrine Glands. So she really connected the endocrine glands to yoga back in 1928. In fact, she identified various endocrine glands with the corresponding chakras in the Hindu system. They're not quite right because the locations are not quite the same. Nevertheless, she was the one who connected the dots first. Now, here's a picture from her book that she wrote. It's a color illustration, as you can see, where she illustrates various chakras with the corresponding endocrine gland. Ali also illustrates her book with her own pictures. And the book that I mentioned in the previous slide is being translated in various languages. What is interesting here is notice how she is clothed differently in these two pictures. The right one is her picture from the American edition, whereas the left one is from her French edition. And it is very clear that she's a lot less clothed in the French edition than the corresponding American edition. And that tells you how much more the censorship worked in the US than in France in the 1920s. Another yoga pioneer of that same era would be Marguerite Agniel. She was an American and she wrote a book which she illustrated with her own picture. She was also a model before that. This picture was taken when she was 42 years old and she had a long illustrious career on modeling and being a dancer for a long period of time before that. Once again, it is very clear that Agniel is actually doing yoga, as you can see from these illustrations from her book, that they are clearly identified 
as we see yoga today. This of yoga was not confined to the United States among Western women. It was also quite prevalent in the British Isles and various parts of continental Europe. Here, for example, Adonia Wallace, she was judged to have the best figure in the British Isles in 1930. In 1935, she published a magazine article where she explains exercises which gave her the fame. In the US, Josephine Rathbone wrote an article in an Indian journal on some aspects of posture education. Clearly, she had been familiar with the Indian system and she has been contributing to postural education in the US for quite some time, especially in the 30s. In fact, she did her PhD in psychology in 1937, and she visited various Indian centers and met with various yoga exponents in her visit. And clearly, she came to Calcutta, as we know, because she invited in 1940 in her PE 168D class, which was famous in all of Columbia University. She brought Vishnu Charan Ghosh from Calcutta to do the demonstration in her class. The first clearly written one whole book rather than a small pamphlet by a woman in India on yoga was definitely that of Sita Devi Yogendra. She wrote, she was the wife of Swami Yogendra and she wrote the book especially for women explaining various postures that women can and should practice. And she also listed down a whole bunch of other things such as when to practice and when not to practice. For example, if there are menstruation cycles, then there are corresponding yoga on what to do and what not to do. Among pioneering Indian women on yoga, a big role was played by Vishnu Ghosh's college in Calcutta. And that's where there was a huge emphasis of culture of yoga for women. And it is different from other schools of yoga in India and the West. And that is because strength was considered an integral part of learning for women's yoga, which was almost absent in most of the other yoga schools that we see around the world around that time. So for example, here's a picture of Reva Das, wife of Nilbani Das, who was famous for his books and uh, for his physical education classes. Here we see Reva Das bending an iron as a demonstration. And this comes back to what Swami Vivekananda taught at the turn of the century to the Bengalis that they need to strengthen their body and not just for men, but also for women as well. Bengali school of yoga had particular emphasis on body strength, as I mentioned earlier. Unlike other schools, where mostly the emphasis was on beauty and flexibility. For example, Lavan Nepalit wrote a book in Bengali about her experience in yoga. She was a yoga teacher in Vishnu Ghosh's college. And here we can see on the left, she's performing one of those stomach strengthening exercise that is often given for women who have problems with their menstrual cycles. And same with the middle picture there as well. The picture on the right is that of Reva Rakshit. She was, she became very famous in the 1940s and 50s. She became a circus performer. Her feat of strength was to bend irons and so on. With the finale, she had an elephant walk over her body with nothing but a plank over her frontal part of the body. And 
that was a difficult task to perform and she used to do that quite regularly again we see the strength is one of the fundamental pillars of the bengali style of yoga at that time 